What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest rising OS. This is the version 2.2 and the code name is Ignis and this is the official latest build for the Redmi Note 10 Pro and the build date here is of 30th April 2024. I have been testing it for about a week now and I would say my experience overall for this particular ROM has been really good. I'll try to explain all the features of this ROM so stay tuned. This ROM includes the core G apps and that is why this ROM file size is actually very very less, it's about 2GB, so you can guess it's a very light ROM. But the good thing is, this ROM does include the Leica camera, the Dolby Atmos and everything. And if you don't know how to flash this ROM on your Redmi Note 10 Pro, you can check out the flashing guide from the description. In the about section, this is how it looks like. We have the Rising OS logo right here. It has this Windows mouse kind of arrow over here in terms of the R of the Rising OS. Looks different, I have to say here. Here we have the Rising UI version 2.2 and the build is maintained by Arav and Ajit. So huge thanks to the developers of this ROM. And we have the security patch update right here. And that is of April, I guess. And we have the stock kernel as the 4.14 OpenLA kernel. And if I go into the proper Android version section, this is how it looks like. On top, we'll also get the Rising OS logo. And the Android version is of course Android 14. Let me go back. The security patch is again April 5th, 2024. And here the build date you can also see that is 30th April, 2024. In the system settings, let me show you, there is the USB configuration right here. So you can set it to file transfer for convenience and we have the gestures right here and we have the quickly open camera and then we have the navigation mode as well. In the settings of it, we do get the pill length and the radius customization both and with the maximum of both of these options, this is how the pill bar will look like. We have the navigation hint and the IME button space. Then we have the back gesture height, back gesture animation. Swipe to invoke assistant is also there and this is how it works. As you can see, this is the Gemini of Google and it is actually working fine but there is a two button and three button navigations in case you want to use those we have the one handed mode as well that too should be working fine then we have the press and hold power button action and the prevent ringing option we have the system updater so you can check for updates from right here we have the thermal profiles as well so you can set per apps thermal profile from right here i have already did that for the android benchmark and stuff but you can also change the options to the benchmark default then the browser camera dialer gaming navigation streaming and video options by the way these are mostly the stock apps of this ROM. you will get a calculator then the like your camera and stuff and a different clock but the co-pilot the fresh walls all these apps are there because i was downloading my google app data backup now here let's talk about the stock launcher well to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page swiping up will get you to the app drawer and swiping down will get you to the quick selling panel and here tapping and holding on a widget and stuff everything is working fine and all the widget kind of animation opening and closing works perfectly fine and everywhere the scrolling and stuff it's perfectly smooth but here let me actually show you in the home screen settings we are getting the pixel launcher right out of the box we only have the suggestion disabling option there is no option to actually do the double tap to sleep stuff but of course double tap to sleep is there on the status bar no issues with it the volume panel looks like this and here let me actually show you i have seen one thing that once I'm doing this, I feel this is a little bit choppy and you can expand the volume panel just like this. And here, let me actually show you the power menu. This is how it looks like. You can do the advanced reboot stuff from right here too. In terms of the quick setting panel, I have added the Wi-Fi and mobile data toggle separately. You can add that. Bluetooth option as well, then the flashlight and stuff. Everything is working fine. The Google Home controls are there. The battery server is there. The screen recording option is there. And there is much more option like the single screen or entire screen. Then we have the HEVC recording and stuff. Then we have the hotspot, then the dark theme, night light, always on display option. The FPS info you can also enable and as you can see, the FPS info appears right on the left corner of the screen. We have the quick share as well. Then we have the do not disturb, alarm, airplane mode, auto rotate and the QR code scanner and stuff like that. In terms of the DRM certification, it has the L1 certification right out of the box. So streaming on Netflix or Amazon Prime should be possible in 1080p. The IR Blaster here also works perfectly fine as you can see. With the API checker, currently it shows me its basic integrity test. Hopefully banking apps will be working too with this but I'm not really sure because it only passes this basic integrity not the device integrity for some reason. In the about section of Play Store it shows device is certified though. And in the Google Photos backup section, it shows this pixel can backup unlimited photos and videos. So that's a good thing. Now let me show you the settings panel. This is how it looks like. We have the personalized section on top. That is where you will find the customization. We have scrolled on more. The settings panel overall looks pretty similar to normal Android 14 kind of settings, but it has this kind of grouped kind of look. And here I'll show you the customization panel later on. But first let me show you the app section. And in here, this is how it looks like. 
just scroll down a little bit more we have the cloned apps right here so you can use the dual apps kind of feature of android 14 and you can add two accounts of whatsapp or facebook or whichever app you want to we have this experimental aspect ratio feature so if you just tap on a particular app you can launch it on full screen half screen or even the device aspect ratio then the 16 by 9 and all the other aspect ratio stuff is there in the notification flash notification as well so you can use it if you want to it works great no problems in the connected device it shows this kind of animation looks really dope and here in the connected preference we get the quick share and stuff they are working totally fine no need to worry now let me show you the battery section here this is how it looks like we have this kind of animation it looks great if you scroll down a little bit more we have the charging control make sure you disable the charging control if you want the best amount of fast charging in the battery information you will get to see the full battery information here it shows the battery cycle count that is the charging cycle count actually for the battery that i have over here shows the maximum capacity and the battery temperature as well let me go back we have the battery optimization part app you can do from here then we have the battery stats and the optimized charging option is also there now let me show you some stats with the accu battery well it may not be correct because my device was in standby for a long time these are all estimated numbers guys but still for me it shows about four and a half hours of screen on time actually i would say five and six hours of screen on time will be perfectly fine no need to worry about it it just shows like that i don't know why we have the screen off about 33 hours so that's a huge amount of time and even the combine you shows as 26 hours so it can definitely last you a full day without any problem but yes the screen on time it's just i feel wrong it will actually give you six to seven hours screen on time without any issues now in the health section for me at least the battery health shows as 81 percent and this is the original battery that i have been using i did not replace the battery it is not a new battery of course three or four years old i guess in the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like we have the media call ring etc volume controls like this and we also have the system haptic stuff and in here you will see the volume panel slider haptics quick setting tile haptics so you can customize pretty much everything through the haptics right here we have the vibration haptic stuff and in here we have the touch feedback and stuff more we have the power volume control dial pad tones and stuff and right here we have the dolby atmos you can put it to dynamic or you can choose it to be movie video and we have the music voice etc options we have this surround visualizer option if you connect a headset i think it will pop up and we have the dialogue enhancer as well then we have the bass enhancer volume leveler all the things are there we have the clear speaker option as well and then we have the haptic feedback you can actually change the intensity of the haptic feedback all through the ui from right here now in the security we have the device unlock settings and in here in the settings of it we have the scramble pin layout then the auto confirmation lock and stuff of course i have added the two fingerprints and in here in the settings of it we also have this touch to unlock feature in the settings of the pixel imprint i'll show you the face unlock stuff later on in the more settings we also get the app lock right here so that is really really nice that we are actually getting the app lock in most roms nowadays we don't get the app lock in android 14 but here we are at least getting that and here let me actually show you if i open telegram as you can see this is how the lock tap ui actually will look like if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it straight up unlocks the particular app. So this is nice. The app lock is working perfectly fine here. Now, one of the best feature about this ROM is the lock screen. Let me actually show you in the always on display. I'll just enable that. And here, as you can see, this is how the always on display actually looks like. Looks so beautiful in my opinion. Just notice how good it looks. Yes, you can customize every toggle over here. Yes, these are the, actually the quick setting panel kind of toggles in the lock screen. And this is just like the nothing UI, as you can see, I can turn on torch and stuff. I can turn on or turn off Bluetooth from here. So this is really, really nice. I would say all these kind of functionalities you can use in the lock screen. And here the finger scanner is of course working perfectly fine. Let me show you a couple more times and just look at the animation, how beautiful it looks. Yes, the animation sometimes becomes a little bit choppy here because Redmi Note 10 Pro is not the most powerful device out there, but still I would say it's pretty usable. No problems that I have faced. As you can see and if i just double tap to wake yes that too is working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever now let me show you the face unlock and i'll just set it up in the face unlock settings we have this require eyes to open always require confirmation and the skip lock screen option there is no swipe up to unlock kind of option over here but i'll try now i'll just double tap to wake and point the device towards my face as you can see it shows that right and it has unlocked let me try one more time so it's trying to recognize but of course it cannot find my face right there let me try one more time here and as you can see this is the animation and it unlocks so yes face unlock works perfectly fine no need to worry about it now i'll just show you the camera quickly and in here we are getting of course the leica camera version 5 i think and you can bring down more options just like this because this is a leica camera version 5 we have the watermark stuff then the palm shutter and all those things 
then the Leica camera styles then we have the HDR options in the photo mode and the lens switching is of course working fine as you can see from here 1x 2x every option is working and in the video settings let me actually show you we have the 4k option but even though it shows the 60fps option even in the 4k mode i would not recommend actually shooting in 4k 60fps because that may not simply work in this particular device because it doesn't support that with the cpu so that's how it is i would say you can shoot up to 4k and 30fps with the rear camera and you can of course shoot 1080p 60fps videos as well if you want to and then we have the documents mode as well and there is the enhanced mode option then we have the pro mode as well you can shoot pro mode videos with this like a camera so that's nice we have the portrait mode right here and in the front camera let me show you this is how it looks like here's the front camera with the portrait mode working perfectly fine no need to worry about it and if you swipe up as you can see there are much more options like the vlog short film slow motion time lapse all the other options you will get right here i have also installed a gcam that too is working perfectly fine no need to worry about it i'll give the link of this gcam in the description do not worry now let me show you the display settings this is how it looks like and here we have the brightness level adaptive or auto brightness in the lock screen this is how it looks like we have the privacy kind of modes we have the use device control and we have the ambient display kind of feature and we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes you can do we also have the screen attention mode then we have the dark theme right here and we have the pure black mode if in case you want to enable that you definitely can then we have the display size and text small as dpi the night light and even the live display option is there and in here we have the anti flicker or the disturbing mode we have the color calibration also then the picture adjustment options as well and you can put the display to this outdoor bright sun mode that will make the display really really bright i have to say here and if you just enable the anti flicker mode your display brightness will decrease a little bit so i just increased it the colors you can change it to natural boosted or adaptive then we have the rotation settings and even the refresh rate kind of changing option is there i have disabled the adaptive refresh rate because sometimes i feel it becomes a little bit choppy with the adaptive refresh rate so i have been using always 120 hertz double tap to wake and the double tap to sleep option is there wake up on plug option is there and we also have the wallpapers and styles this is how it actually looks like and in here just look at the wallpapers if i go into the more wallpapers we have the normal google kind of wallpapers like feathers come alive and stuff then we also get the nothing kind of wallpaper the nothing phone one kind of wallpaper then we have the rising beauty we also get the nothing phone two kind of wallpaper as well then we have the rising voice wallpapers as well and the pixel 8a wallpapers as well i have been using it with this one also there are even more rising waste kind of wallpaper even nothing phone 2a wallpapers are there so you get the idea very good amount of options i have to say here right out of the box but you do not get the android 14 kind of clock styles over here that's because you are getting those ios and stuff lock screen clocks in the home screen section this is how it looks like we have the themed icons as well and we also have the app grid now let's talk performance in the test for website it actually shows it is running at about 99 90 to 100 plus fps so it's pretty much you can say it's running at 120 hertz no issues and this is showing as just like below 100 that's because the redmi note 10 pro in chrome actually shows below 100 fps for some reason but in twitter let me actually show you or x here if i just start scrolling just notice how smooth everything is once it starts loading so yes once everything loads up the scrolling it's perfectly fine no problems whatsoever very smooth experience overall and if i open play store as well just notice how smooth it is and even switching between apps it's not a problem at all so yes overall the ram management and stuff should be good enough in my opinion and you won't be having any huge issues at all by the way the recent panel looks like this you can put it to split screen or stuff like that if you want to and this is how it will look like you can switch the apps just like this so it's no major issues in terms of performance and here are the benchmarks of this particular rom 10 to 20 Geekbench score with a CPU's test test with even the 3D mark tests. Now it's time I'll show you the customizations. Well, those are there in this personalization settings. And in here, just notice how beautiful it looks, the animations and stuff. In the lock screen, this is the first thing you will get in the customization section. And in here, just notice how beautiful it looks with the clock iOS. And there are much more options like all the other clocks you can notice from here, but I'll just keep it on iOS. And here we have the big widget kind of options. And there are plethora of widgets that I have added. It looks like in real time in the lock screen. So it looks perfectly fine, I would say. Shows your phone's battery, your profile. Then we have the RAM usage, the volume stuff. Everything it shows up right here. So yes, it is a really, really a good looking lock screen that I have seen so far. We have the battery info in the lock screen. 
then the weather settings, weather update and stuff you can customize. The screen of UDFPS, it's just a gimmick in this particular device because this does not have a under display fingerprint. We have the ripple effect and the power menu access, you can disable that in the lock screen. In the theme section, we have the ambient display kind of option. We have the wake screen for notification, always show time and info. Display scheduling option is there and we have the always show when charging and stuff. Then we have the additional settings. In here, we have the always on option. If you just disable that, as you can see, there is the pickup option. Let me actually quickly show you the pickup gesture if it's actually working. So yes, right now, as you can see, it is working perfectly fine. It is slightly dim for my liking, but yeah, it is actually working. Then we have the music ticker, the edge lighting and stuff is there. You can enable all of those things if you want to. Then we have the font style and you can actually change the font style to these many options. As you can see, plethora of options are here, including the nothing.57 kind of font and stuff. If you want those, then we have the icon packs and these are the options. Plethora of options are here pretty much for everything. We have the modern theme engine customization. You can customize the luminance and stuff. And we have the navigation bar customization as well. Then we have the quick setting panel customization. We have this automatically turn on Bluetooth stuff, header image, colored quick setting notifications toggle, dual tone theme quick setting panel, and we have the background opacity changing option as well. And if I just decrease the opacity, this is how it will look like. And it actually has a blur as you can see. So this looks good, I have to say here. We have the brightness slider position. You can have it on show always and the position to the bottom. We have the quick setting tile styles. You can have it on the circle and square style. Then we have the other styles as well and height level option is there then we have the vertical layout option we also have the animation styles then we have the data usage clear all notification all these things let me go back we have the setting style changing option as well then we have the single icon styles and these are the options for that plethora of options again and we have the status bar kind of customization we have the status bar icon the headset bluetooth kind of icons customization right here then we have the clock style customization the clock and date kind of feature wi-fi standards and if you scroll down more we have the status bar max icons limit we also have the show logo kind of position kind of changing option then the battery style is there for the status bar and just notice plethora of options are here for the status bar then we have the battery percentage changing option the battery bar is there and you can actually customize the total padding of the status bar from left to right and even the top we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar as a gesture and even the brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar you can actually do that we have the quick pull down as well you can use it if you want to we have the ui style as well and plethora of options are here for that we have the volume panel styles as well just notice how many options you are getting right here then we have the Wi-Fi icon styles as well. Charging animation, screen off animation, etc. are there also. In the toolbox, this is how it looks like and it has this really cool animation again. We have the buttons right here and in here we have the click to quick version screenshot, long press forward and toggle torch and, and in the power menu in here you will get the advanced reboot and the secured lock screen stuff. We do have the full screen apps as well and we have the game space right here so you can add any game if you want to. Then we have the navigation option right here. Pixel animation you can enable from right here and we have the skip gesture and the shake gesture and stuff so you can enable this option and you can actually perform this if i just shake it as you can see it turns on torch as i have selected that and it turns off torch so this is really nice the shake gesture should be working fine and we have the floating loaded button enable gms spoof i'm not really sure what that is but yeah we have the netflix spoof pocket detection always on pocket mode then we have the swipe look screenshot the unlock higher pc in games unlimited photos the google photos kind of feature and we have the sensor block per package and even smart pixel kind of option. We also have the notification kind of customization. We have the noise notification for stop button, show clipboard and even the island notification options are there. We have the heads up, the list boarding, the timeout and even the blink flashlight for incoming call, ignore dear near stuff. In the sound settings, I think we have the pulse, the sound engine option is there. And as you can see, there is the adaptive kind of sound engine. I think this was there in MIUI as well. Adaptive playback option is there. The screenshot sound, you can disable it. Power app volume control is there. Volume panel on the left side. Even the timeout for the volume panel, you can customize. Then the in-call vibration options are also present here. So pretty much plethora of customizations that you will get in this particular ROM. So I feel this is definitely one of the most customizable ROM with one of the most beautiful kind of looking lock screen for the Redmi Note 10 Pro so far. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this latest rising wish on the Redmi Note 10 Pro guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KTN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.